Ever thought about how your creative talents could be the driving force behind real change? Are you curious to explore your passion and how it can evolve into a thriving business venture? Well, I'm thrilled to share with you five secrets that can spark positive change, drawing from my own experience. As a California native, my life has been a tapestry of roles, from being an executive design leader in tech to a mom on a mission. I've leveraged my strategic creativity, my passion for innovation, and my nurturing instinct to help you embark on your transformational journey. Join me as I guide you through the mesmerizing world of storytelling, empathy, and the magic of AI. Recently, I found myself yearning to turn my life story into a series of semi-autobiographical fairy tale illustrated books. But life's demands often got in the way. But now is the day. It's true what they say. There's no better time than the present. Secret number one. The perfect time to start pursuing your passions is right now. However, I am not starting from scratch. Back in May 2022, anti-Asian hate crimes were on the rise while the pain of a mass shooting in the Buffalo grocery store lingered. It was AAPI month, and I decided to share my story through a Pecha Kucha, which is a presentation, 20 slides, 20 seconds each, a format that deeply resonated, which I will share in this video. This heartfelt connection is now the cornerstone of my children's illustrated book. Secret number two, infuse your journey with personal experiences. As a parent, I've sought out personalized books that my kids could relate to and enjoy together. Books like Eyes That Kiss in the Corners and I Dream of Papal, which makes me cry every time I read it. They held the power of representation. With my creative background, my goal is to create something equally enchanting for my children and others. Secret number three, let your love for your dear ones fuel your endeavors. Here is my Pecha Kucha from that time. But remember, this story is just the starting point. I invite you to join me on this creative adventure. You may have seen me skating around like this. You may ask, why do I do this? Well, it's more efficient. I started skating in the office because every shoe I tried would squeak on the polished concrete. In 2020, roller skating as a way to teach my son how it's never too late to start learning something new. It's something my parents practiced with my brother and I. In 2021, I joined a community committed to doing 365 days of skate. The skate park and mobile video editing were an extra challenge. Passing on fun and continuous learning onto my family is a top priority. Consider how rewarding it would be to learn something new with the people you love in your life. My parents had their own design firm. Growing up at their office, I wanted to try everything creative. I would get into all the tools of the trade, crafting my own stickers from their wax machine and eventually working for them by the time I was in high school. My parents... They grew up with very different backgrounds. My dad's dad immigrated alone to the United States at 14 to work in a kitchen in Nebraska, sending money home to help his family survive. He was drafted in the army for World War II, which he remembered fondly of having food and clean boots. Recently, my father was able to receive a Congressional Medal of Honor on his behalf. In the early 80s, I traveled with him to China. I remember one moment feeling happy my parents let me drink an ice cold Coca-Cola and shortly after some tourists wanted to take my photo feeling like I was on display. This beginning my complicated feelings towards culture and country. On the other side, my mom's mom was a force to be reckoned with. She immigrated with her family to San Francisco when she was three on what sounded like a first class voyage on a Titanic like boat that didn't sink before arriving at Angel Island. She always put her time into what she found important. She was one of the founders of Empress of China in San Francisco, the most upscale Chinese restaurant of the time, patronized by several presidents and celebrities. We used to go there as if it was her extended living room, and I loved the opportunity to dress up for the occasion. When it reopened in 2021, I brought my kids. 
She taught me how to crochet when I was little by having me watch her do it endlessly. And I would try to mimic her motions in her 90s when her mind was deteriorating while giving my husband and I a watching lesson. She remarked how amazing I was at crochet. And I was pleased to remind her that she was the one to teach me. I have developed many hobbies on my own. To this day, I'm constantly adding to my craft, bringing along anyone that wants to try. My husband thinks my top value is breaking routine, taking on new challenges, and having tenacity to learn or do something new in service of fun. I think he's right. Learning is an opportunity. I'm also a mid-century modern enthusiast. When looking for a home, it was important to find a community with different cultures and backgrounds to start a family. Moving around as a kid made me realize how much community molds you as a person. One move in particular had a long-lasting effect on my life. In 1991, after Sunday school, my family watched at the Macy's Union Square Electronics Department for a glimpse of my childhood home in the flames of the Oakland Hills fire. We tried to make sense of what we were watching on the rows of 32-inch television boxes, but we were the lucky ones. My parents made the decision to move to Lafayette, a 20-minute drive from our Oakland house, only a couple months before the fire. My elementary school friends, old neighbors, they weren't as lucky. Torn apart, relocated, changing everything, and a scramble to feel secure again. I lost touch with almost all of them. That 20-minute drive may as well have been to another planet. I went from learning about Rosa Parks and fighting for equality to how pilgrims and Native Americans were friends and how awesome Christopher Columbus was. I felt the difference, and I struggled to find my place. In sixth grade, I wanted to watch some girls practice a dance they were learning for a talent show when one of the girls stopped me from coming into the room telling me, no Chinese allowed. It wasn't until I was an adult that I could describe the microaggression and my feelings into words like being othered and excluded. I felt like an outsider. In seventh grade, I was more than a head shorter than some of my peers. I had yet to go through puberty. Always picked last for sports teams and sometimes had small rocks thrown at me at PE when I was minding my own business. Eventually, I found my motley crew. A group filled with different cultures, faiths, and traditions where differences were appreciated with curiosity and understanding. Everyone is welcome, no one is perfect, and anything is possible. We built lasting relationships and connections that we still value to this day. One way we build up that understanding is through food. Food was a way to stay curious about each other and brought us all together. Each taste represented our own family and culture. From samosas to caffeine-free Coca-Cola, each bite unlocked conversations that might otherwise have been taboo. Fast forward to the pandemic, food is still front and center. My family learned how to cook dishes from around the world with Michelin-rated chefs over Zoom with Truffle Shuffle. My kids were able to get a little taste of what's outside our home while we were stuck inside. Hosting a costume party for my dog Genghis's first birthday was one example of bringing a bunch of people together in fun towards a creative experience. I love to bring people together to have fun and learn from each other. It's all about inclusion, creating connection, and building relationships. My parents took up skating in their 40s as an activity we could do as a family. They taught me growth mindset and grit and the desire to learn something new to bring people together. I invite you to make connections with me, build out our relationship, and we can see how to win together. Skating is not a requirement, but it's often a side effect. Thank you. Well, with that glimpse into my journey's inception, I encourage you to engage by smashing that like button and subscribing. In the upcoming segments, we'll explore visual AI with MidJourney and Photoshop's beta, We'll dive into the realm of character and world development for my fantasy autobiography. Secret number four, shape your creation as needed and infuse it with fun. Your stories are waiting to be told. This isn't just my story. It's a collective narrative about our ability to craft impactful stories. It's a guiding light for fellow creatives and tech enthusiasts. 
reminding us that our strengths and our passions matter more than the day we grind. Secret number five, unity is where our truth strength lies. My mission is clear, to inspire, nurture creativity, and demonstrate how AI can amplify our imagination. I stand at the helm of the symphony of words and images, where stories bridge generations and technology enhances our tales. What's your take? What stories are burning within you? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for being a part of this journey. Until next time.